Up until this section, you guys have just learned the strategies of solving systems of equations. Now you're going to take graphing, substitution, and the elimination method and use them in solving systems that are applicable to everyday life. So you're going to be taking a linear system of equations and the applications in which you could use them. So look at page 255. I want you to look over the chart yourself and in the concept summary in the white section look at how you would pick whether or not you should graph, substitute, or use elimination. Then, once you've done that, look at the bottom part. This is all about a graph. Systems of equations are useful for modeling problems involving mixtures, rates, and break-even points. The break-even point for a business is the point at which income equals expenses. The graph shows the break-even point for one business, and the break-even point is your point of intersection. Before that point, the red line shows your expenses, which is higher than the, the income, which is the, the darker line. So basically, everything before the, po the point of intersection is when you lose money. After that is when you make money. So it's important to understand that you actually can use this in everyday life, and businesses do use systems of equations to solve these things. Now let's look at the got it problem on page 256. The got it problem says, a puzzle expert wrote a new Sudoku puzzle book. His initial costs are $864. Binding and packaging each for each book costs 80 cents. The price of the book is $2. How many copies must be sold to break even? So the first thing I want you to look at is this is really kind of confusing to set up. But if we're talking about break-even points, break-even points are when you have one line that represents income and one line that represents expenses. So let's start with our first equation. It says his initial costs are $864. Well, that means he's paying that. So $864 is an expense. And then it's also an expense to pay for binding and packaging, which costs 80 cents per book. So per book, we don't know, so that'd be X. So it's gonna be 80 cents per book plus the initial $864. Now his, so that's expenses, which I'm gonna put as E. Income is another equation. His income is just two bucks per book. So Y equals two X. Now the previous page, it showed you it showed you to graph, but there's no point in graphing this. You can use whatever you would like. So since this is solved for y, I'm going to plug in 2x for y. That would give me the equation 2x equals 80 cents x plus $864. I subtract 0.8x on both sides. That's 1.2x equals 864 divide by 1.2, x is 720. Now you actually don't have to plug that in because the question asks after how many books. x is the number of books. So therefore, 720 books is my answer. Example number one. A bicycle store costs $2,400 per month to operate. That's an expense. The store pays an average of $60 per bike. That's an expense. The average selling price of each bike is $120. That's income. How many bicycles must the store sell each month to break even? So let's start with our equation, our expense equation, y equals. How much does it cost per bike? $60. So what expression would you write for $60 per bike? 60x. And then it costs $2,400 a month to operate. So plus the additional $2,400. The average selling price is $120 per bike. So 120x. So I'm going to take this, plug it in using substitution. 
120x equals 60x plus 2400. Subtract 60x on both sides. That would give me the equation 60x equals 2400. If I divide 2400 divided by 60, that gives me 40. X is the number of bicycles. So your answer is 40 bicycles. On page 257, it says at the top that in real-world situations, you need to consider the constraints described in the problem in order to write an equation. Once you solve an equation, you need to consider the viability of the solution. For example, a solution that has a negative number of hours is not a viable solution. So these are the same types of problems, but you have to understand what your answer is telling you and how it relates to what you're doing in the problem. So problem number two, identifying constraints and viable solutions. So the got it problem says that the zoo has two water tanks that are leaking. One tank contains 10 gallons of water and is leaking at a constant rate of two gallons per hour. The second tank contains six gallons of water and is leaking at a constant rate of four gallons per hour. When will the tanks have the same amount of water? So the first equation would be the one tank. So y equals, well the tank has 10 gallons of water and is leaking at a rate of two gallons per hour. So that'd be minus two x. The second equation would be y equals six gallons per hour, subtracting four gallons per hour, which is 4x. Easily at substitution, block this up, plug it in. So that would give me 6 minus 4x equals 10 minus 2x. I'm going to add 4x to both sides. 6 equals 10 plus 2x. Subtract 10, that would be 2x equals negative 4. That gives me an answer of negative 2. I'm going to plug the negative 2 in for either here or here. It doesn't matter. So let's do, I'd say I do y equals 10 minus 2 times negative 2. y equals 10 plus 4. That gives me y equals 14. So that means my answer is negative 2, 14. So remember what this means. 2 gallons per hour. That means x is the number of hours. That means how much water is left, or how much water would they be the same. So let's think about what this says, your constraint. It says the number of hours is negative 2. Now that is where your graph will intersect. It is negative 2, 14. But can negative 2 be a viable solution? No. Negative 2, it's not possible to have a negative 2 hours. So the tanks never will have the same amount of water. This is not a solution. So the tanks will never have the same amount of water, even though that is a point of intersection. You have to understand what it's asking you to find. So let's do number three. It says you split $1,500 between two savings accounts. Account A pays 5% annual interest, and account B pays 4% annual interest. After one year, you have earned a total of $69.50 in interest. How much money did you invest in each account? So we're going to let X be the amount of money that we invested at 5%, and we're going to let Y represent the amount of money invested at 4%. So we know combined we had $1,500. So x plus y equals 1,500. Then account A pays 5%. So that'd be 5 hundredths, 0 0.05 of x, because that's 5% as a decimal, plus 4% interest. That gives me a total amount of interest of $69.50. You could easily multiply the top and bottom by a negative 0 0.05 or negative 0 0.04 in order to get uh, the addition method or elimination, but I'm going to use substitution. 
So I'm going to move the y to the other side. That gives me x equals $1,500 minus y. I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in right here for x. So then I would get 0 0.05 times the quantity 1,500 minus y plus 0 0.04y equals 69.5. Distribute, that gives me, I believe that's 75, minus 0.05y plus 0.04y equals 69.5. Combine like terms, and I'm going to subtract the 75 to the other side as well. So negative 0 0.05 plus 0 0.04 is negative 0.01y equals 69.5 or $69.50 minus seventy five dollars that gives me negative five point five I divide by negative point zero one that gives me y equals five hundred and fifty now remember y was the four percent interest so y is five hundred and fifty so I'm gonna take this plug it in right here for y to find x fifteen hundred Minus 550 will give us $950. Now you got to put this in words because this means nothing to me. So what does that mean? It means $950 was at the 5% interest and $550 was at the 4% interest. And that's my answer. This last problem, problem three, is the hardest part of this section. We're going to be solving a wind or current problem. Now, before you actually read the box at the top of page 258, wind. When you're talking about wind, think of baseball. If you throw a baseball into the wind and the wind's coming at you, it's going to slow the baseball down. If you throw a ball with the wind, and the ball is going the same direction as the wind, it speeds up the ball. The same thing is true with a current. Current of water. If the water is going, if you're going with the current, it's speeding you up. If you go against the current, it's speeding you down. So if we look at the top of page 258, you can read it yourself. But basically what it means is this. If you go from west to east, your airspeed increases with the wind speed to give you the ground speed, so you add it on. East to west, it slows you down. So, west to east acts as a tailwind. That means it speeds up. If you go from east to west, that adds as a headwind. That slows you down. So a tailwind, you add, it speeds you up. Headwind, it slows you down. So we're going to start with a got it problem. All right, here's got it problem A. Now, this is going to be confusing, so you might have to watch this a couple times. A says, you row upstream at a speed of 2 miles per hour. You travel the same distance downstream at a speed of 5 miles per hour. What would your rowing speed be in still water, and what is the speed of the current? Now, here's what I want to do before we start this problem. I want you to think of it this way. There are two things that make your speed always when you're in the water. You have the speed, we're gonna call this X. I'm always gonna put X as your actual speed. That's in still water. Still water means no current. If you are going upstream, you're going against the current, which means X minus C would actually give you your total speed. So this is your total speed or your, your actual speed of what you're going. So this is upstream because you're going against the current. So the actual speed you're going is being subtracted by the speed of the current. Downstream means you're going with the current. It means you, it's going to speed you up. So your speed is going to be increased by the current, which also gives you your total speed. So in this problem, it says you row upstream at a speed of 2 miles per hour. Your total speed is 2, so it's going to be equals 2. We don't know the speed that you are going or the speed of your current. Now, because you're going upstream, 
it's x minus c, it slows you down. Downstream, x plus c is going to give you 5. Right off the bat, we look at this and we say, oh, I can do addition method. Add them together. 2x equals 7. Divide by 2, x equals 3 and a half. Now, what does x stand for? x, and this is why it probably would help at the very beginning if you put x equals your speed. That's without, that's like in still water, that's without any current. C is pretty easy, that's current, because we let it be C. So your x, so the first question says, what is your rowing speed in still water? Still water means with no current, you're going three and a half miles per hour. There's the first answer, that's your x. To find your c, we plug it in. So I don't care where you plug it in. Uh, I'm going to take it and plug it in. It looks like right here. So 3.5 plus c equals 5. You just take 5 minus 3.5. That means the current is going 1.5 miles per hour. So the current, the speed of the water, is going 1.5 miles per hour. And that's your answer. The last problem we're going to do is number five, which is about airports. A traveler is walking on a moving walkway in an airport. The traveler must walk back on the walkway to get a bag he forgot. The traveler's ground speed is two feet against the walkway and six feet with the walkway. This is kind of like an escalator, but they're flat and, and passengers can ride on them if they're going from one um, terminal to another in an airport. What is the traveler's speed off the walkway and on the walkway? So off the walkway would be his normal speed, and the walkway would be the speed of the actual walkway itself. So x is the walker's speed. The walkway, I'm going to use w. So when he's going, it says the traveler's ground speed is 2 feet against the walkway. So that means against the walkway is x minus w is 2 feet per second. And with the walkway, because it's speeding up, is 6 feet per second. They're ready to go. Solve it by elimination. 2x equals 8. x equals 4. So what is the speed of the traveler off the walkway? His speed is 4. Oops, not miles per hour. That'd be impossible. 4 feet per second. So what is the speed of the walkway? Take the 4 and plug it in. w plus 4 equals 6, which means that would give you 2. So the walkway is 2 feet per second.